Hello again. I'm on the road. I'm in South Wales again. I'm just down the road from the Rolls of Monmouth and I am at what might be called a hidden gem. I'm at Woodlake Park. Now the reason why I call it a hidden gem is those of us in England from Bristol to Gloucester and perhaps a little bit north when we come to South Wales we tend to go to the Rolls of Monmouth or Celtic Manor just uh, just down the road that way. This place is accessed by a single track road so you've got a couple of miles of hedgerow to hedgerow driving to get here but it's well worth the trip and it's only £25 so it's priced to sell, it's priced to attract you. And this is a cracking course and it's really well appointed. I haven't done the usual take a picture of the entrance and the driveway and the planting and the clubhouse. Just want to keep the video a fraction shorter. But this is a great place to be and it's a tough track. Can't remember the yardage off the top of my head. I'll stick it in a caption here. But from the yellow tees, it's a slope of 131. And from the competition tees, it's 138. This place is no pushover. The greens are fantastic. Not too sure about the bunkers, but we'll try and stay out of those anyway, because uh, I'm struggling a bit with the bunker play at the moment, as you will have seen, probably because for months and months and months, we haven't been raking them properly. So um, we'll see how it goes. Now, what, I've only been here once before, and it was about 15 years ago and they put us off the third tee. There was a golf society going off the first tee behind me, so our golf society went off the third, and we played the first as our 17th hole. And it's really tricky, because when you're deep into your round of golf, you're, you're loose, you know which direction you're hitting the ball in, so it was okay as the 17th. Today I've got to play it as a first, and um, yeah, I'm not too sure. So I'm gonna get in the net over here and have a warm up, I'm off in about 25 minutes. See you on the first tee. Right, before I get off, it's uh, 30 degrees, 31 perhaps, or even 32. It's pretty hot. A little bit of breeze to fool you into thinking that it's not hot, but it is hot. Now, what I remember about coming here 15 years ago is that I would have been slightly higher handicapper, and I would have been trying to hit the cover off the ball and I would have been taking on all the hero shots. What I do remember, I don't know what people scored, but I do remember that nobody beat their handicap. This is not going to be a walk in the park. It's a proper golf course, you know, not one of those four and a half thousand par 67s that, um, well, some channels appear. Now I'm gonna play the Inesis Tour 900. I tried it back in April when it was a bit cold and it felt clicky you know it felt a little firm now I've just done minimum warm-up here because it's so hot and it doesn't feel good and um, I don't think it's very durable either but you know we'll give it a go and I'll give you a verdict on the Tour 900 I think it was 27 pound a dozen so considerably cheaper than uh, Pro V1s etc but it doesn't feel like a Pro V1 Let's wander across to the first tee and get going.
just remembered. I take the flag out now. <laughs> oh, there's a view of the reservoir here. It looks very low. Second tee. Dog leg to the right, downhill, then a dog leg left. I've had a guess at going with the three wood here, and it's the wrong club. So I've hit the fade I wanted, but there's a bit of a clunk as it catches the last tree down there on the right. It's rattled through the tree, and I've finished up here. Yeah, I think I'd go with the hybrid if I come back. Because if I hadn't clunked the last tree, I might have lost that ball. That wasn't a lot of fun. Got two guys in golf carts driving right up behind me. Hit balls at me on the second. Although, to be fair, they, they wouldn't have seen me down there in that corner. But when I walked, I played my second shot, I walked up to the green and uh, they're just there, 50 yards short of the green, staring at me. So I didn't set the camera up properly, I didn't even take my glove off for the chip, I didn't hold me 20 inch putt, just rushed. So I'm going to stay here in the shade now, by the third tee, I'll let them get through, let them get them on their way. I can't keep up with someone who's got a motor up their ass. Right, it's 290 downhill on a firm fairway to a ditch before we go back uphill for the rest of the par five. So I'm gonna hit three wood. I can't get on in two, but if I hit a bloody good drive down here, I'm gonna lose my ball, so three wood. And I bet I didn't do that 15 years ago. Personally, I don't like getting strokes on par fives. I'd much rather have them long par fours and long par threes or really tricky holes i mean there's nothing particularly tricky about this hole i don't quite understand why it's stroke three but then we rarely do understand how they sort out the stroke indexes do we as it happens come down a bit steep popped it up and it's short but no harm done and that's how I try and play my golf, really, is no harm done. sudden the hole looks enormous so when I played at rolls I was a little bit injured and I went up to Liverpool coming out of that injury and I had a little dose of the pulls and I've still got it I'm coming down too steeply and there's something strong in my grip somewhere and I haven't figured it out I got 40 yards here the flag is actually behind the trunk of the tree, so you can't see it. So this is just a bump up there. Yeah, and I'm still coming down too steeply on it even now. So I haven't quite fixed it yet. 
But I want to talk about equipment. As you can see here, the green is green. But when I set up the camera in a different angle, it's now showing brown. So I might have an equipment change in the near future. Number five, up the hill, it plays a lot longer than the yardage. You've got to keep left because of those trees. So at least the pull did me a bit of a favour here. And I got myself suckered into going for this front flag instead of the middle of the green. So I'm taking the seven. It lands barely short of the green and then runs off to the left. Should never have let myself get suckered into going for a front flag. Especially when we get up on the green. And then you'll see that there's this huge step. So, you know, I could have taken a six and hit it eight yards past this flag and it would have been just fine. I'm coming down steep on it today, but at least that was a fade, not that pulley thing that's been killing me. And just to show how much my brain is fried, you can see here I'm aiming to the right, and again, I'm relying on bouncing down the hill to get to the front, get to a front flag. It's a huge mistake. You know, I mentioned that when bunker wrecks came back, some people wouldn't wreck bunkers. Look at this shit. How do I hit this? Well, I'm sat in a deep footprint and I got to move about three or four inches of sand before I get anywhere near that ball. Wish me luck. It's on the green. Oh boy, it is baking. The seat is baking. It's burning my ass. I don't know why I've just sat down. Gotta keep the fluids going in. So uh, all that uphill stuff, there's gotta be a reward, right? Well, the reward is just behind you. And if you don't like this hole, you've got no soul. I'm gonna stick the camera up here on the competition tee so uh, you can see everything and boy there's plenty to see so I'm not cutting this clip down to just a tee shot I'm gonna let you enjoy the scenery
440 yards might seem a little short for a par 5 but it's up there and it will play every inch of it and considerably more It's right, but I prefer that to left. So for those of you who don't own a calculator, my drive went 205 yards. That's how steeply uphill this hole is playing. 78, uphill, back into the breeze. Tongue stuck to the roof of the mouth. Knackered. Flags on the back shelf. So I'm going with the 50 degree. You know, because I'd have to hit my sandwich flat out and I'm in no mood for hitting anything flat out. Simple plan here is to aim left of this flag, take the 50, swing it lazy, leave the club face open a bit and just move it gently to the right. But because something strong is going on in my grip or my swing or something, yeah, this is just dragged hard left. And it's not pretty. All right, it's on the dance floor, or rather the edge of the dance floor. But it's not pretty. Not when you're trying to leave the face open a fraction. And I've hammered that one. It's hot. Rushed all the putting there. Another group coming up behind in golf carts. Mind you, with the hills, I can see why they're popular. But it does mean that they get right up your chuff. Anyway, ninth tee. Now, all we've been doing so far is getting further and further away from the clubhouse. So, um, the ninth doesn't go back to the clubhouse. So if you want to curl one out, do it before you tee off. Downhill, dog leg left. Not sure what club I want here. I know I want to hit it far enough so I can see the green, but I don't want to hit it too far. So I settled on the hybrid. And because my setup was poor, I've given it a bit of a shove to the right. This is very simply, I can't get at the flag, so I'm aiming way out left and I'm relying on the ground to do some work for me. It did some work for me, but not the work I wanted it to do. Oh. Oh, yeah, I landed it short as I wanted, but it's just run an absolute mile to the right. Yeah, so I hit it down the flag but it's, it's bounced way over here somewhere and it's just run all the way down. I got 30 yards here and a bad lie. So I'm just going to clunk it with a wedge. I'm, literally, it's just going to be a clunk. I haven't even got the energy to chip.
Well, it's a bogey, but it was a second shot. I should have, uh, whether, see, I've, I've come from up here. What I should have done was play it out to here, but I hit it down the banner, and so it's, it's run across there and over towards where my bag is. Still, one to remember for next time. Mm -hmm.